In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fit an ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, some SDI Extreme ISO recording, a Hyperdeck for video playback, a router so you can control your network, a Netgear 16 port PoE switch to power PTZ cameras, and a Raspberry Pi for control, all into a four unit SKB studio flyer rack so that for your next live stream, you can just roll up and get underway. When I upgraded from the Extreme to the ATEM 2ME, it was important to me that everything would still fit within this rack. It's got wheels, handle. This is semi-waterproof. I don't think I would submerge it into water, but it certainly would take the rain and that kind of abuse. It's got two latches. Pull this back and this whole lid will break away. An ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, a great way to be able to get nine channels of video recording. This fits on top and the cords all feed into the rack itself and we can just break away this panel. Taking a quick look along the back side of the rack here, we've got this patch panel feeding into the rack, the Netgear switch, the router, a fan, a custom panel. Flip this rack around. On the other side, we have the same breakaway panel. So let's plug it in. Now we can actually go along and turn on these switches individually and boot this all up. I've got control over the Pi here and the fan at the back. Got the Hyperdeck, the 2ME Constellation, HDMI and USB hub control going through to the Mac. And this is where I would plug in the Stream Deck for the Pi. All right, let's swing it around and we'll see the backside. One of the things that was important to me in designing the rack was to make sure that I could have easy access to all of the connections inside the rack. So there's one slot that's empty here and then this fan is designed to be a breakaway. So two quick release screws that come undone like that and put them up there and I can just disconnect the power and I can get my hand in here to access. Same goes with this top shelf, I can release that. Let's take a look at the extreme because if we disconnect this, then we can get inside the rack. This whole top just lifts off if we need to access that in a pinch. Pull out these cables. We've got a 12 volt circuit to run some additional things, the 16 port switch a router, the Pi is sitting back here, and then we've got a USB-C hub to connect a computer. Under here, pouches that fit perfectly in these four little slots, screwdrivers, and any little cables that I need to adjust this rack. Let's swing over to the computer and we'll take a look at a time-lapse of how this was put together. This is the studio, my desk here on wheels, so it's very easy to reconfigure depending on what I'm doing. In my previous rack, Unboxing the ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, get a sense of size and how it sits within that rack. Have it a little bit higher up so that the top shelf would actually support the tray that is holding the computer parts. We've got the power conditioner coming into the side of the rack to make sure we have clean power coming into the rack. And from there, it's going into the power strip where I can turn off individual devices. Because the Constellation HD is pure SDI, there's gonna be times when I need to get HDMI in and out of the rack. So I have three bi-directional converters that are embedded within the rack. So by default, I have three HDMI out and three HDMI in, because remember these are bi-directional, so they work both ways at once. So that helps for connecting laptops to get graphics in or PowerPoint presentations, or even to plug the multi-viewer into uh, an HDMI monitor. Packing up the old HDMI version of the Extreme and bringing in the new SDI version, which will be the ISO recorder for the 2ME Constellation. Now I could have put the Extreme SDI within the rack, but for heat reasons and also just to be able to break it away easily if I don't want to take this whole rack with me and I just want to take a smaller unit, I decided to leave it on top of the rack and it actually fits within that lid which will close down. So it keeps it all in place for transport and makes it easy to access. And then I'm just using a bit of wood with some Velcro on the back so that I can slip that under the um, Extreme just to pop it up because I feel like with the extreme heat is its enemy and it will destroy it over time. Now I've put the custom front patch panel in place and you can see some of the connections coming out the back of there. Particularly I'm working on the 12 volt circuit. So there are some switches at the front where I can control the power for the Pi. I've got a 12 volt to a five volt um, step down converter if I need to reboot it. Couple more photographs to show you deeper inside the rack so you can see what is going on here. 
Starting from the left hand side, we have the power conditioner, which is receiving AC power in and then passing that through to the power strip, 100 watts USB-C output for the laptop, two Avenir HDMI splitters, three SDI to HDMI bi-directional converters, six port USB power bank, PoE switch power supply, and the 12 volt 10 amp power supply. And then in the very far corner, I've got a 12 volt 5 amp power brick that is running the ATEM Extreme. Here's another angle of it. You get to see the patch panel along the front, power in, 12 volt circuit out for a network switch or monitor. 10 SDI patch points, 7 HDMI patch points. Now we have the ATEM 2ME constellation and the hyperdeck that have been added in. Here it is with the fan in place and with the networking shelf so that it's easy to organize so I don't have cables dropping into the unit. But it's also perforated tray so that we can have airflow that goes through the rack. There's a USB-C hub to connect to the Mac. And then I have a, a GL iNet router, which is the new Slate version, which is Wi-Fi 6. I really like this router. I've shown you in previous videos the barrel version. This is the updated one. And then of course, all of my switching is being done on a very simple Stream Deck running companion that can control the Constellation 2ME and the Extreme and the Hyperdeck and VLC and all of these things combined into one little device. So it makes switching very easy and it avoids having to carry around a big console. This is the live stream we did recently at Amazon's headquarters. When I come to switching, really clean display where I've just got my two stream decks for the program switching and the auxiliary switching. I've got the Raspberry Pi sitting within the rack so that if I ever need to in a pinch, I can plug in a stream deck. And then lastly, when it comes to planning your rack build, I highly recommend H2R gear because this is a free web diagram that can help you plan out all of your different routings so you don't get lost when you try and build a rack with a ton of connections. So let's take a look at the way that I approach this for my job. This is a bird's eye view of what is going on. It's all centered around the ATEM 2ME constellation and there's ISO recording into the ATEM Extreme and then we had six cameras set up in the room. All of these cables need a SDI cable run of about 200 feet to bring us back into the control room. Our inputs coming here from the cameras, the program feed from our remote presenter in LA, bi-directional HDMI converters that are built into the rack by default, a hyperdeck, and then on input 19 and 20, a loop through of the hard patched multi viewer. So, unlike the ATEM mini series where you can switch between the multi viewer and an auxiliary output, on the outputs on the Constellation 2ME, the multi viewers 1 and 2 are hard patched to an SDI out. So, if you want to be able to route that through to different destinations, you actually need to get a patch cable and bring that back in. So, I've taken it out of multi view 1 and 2 and I'm going into inputs 19 and 20. So, from there, I can on auxiliary one or auxiliary seven, whatever the case may be, to route the multi-viewer where I need to go. So that overview should give you a bunch of ideas of how you can build a very powerful live streaming rack within a very small amount of space so that the next time you have to transport yourself to a live streaming gig, you can roll up and get underway right away. If you're interested in any of the gear, I'm gonna list that on my website, davidjoshuaford.com, so you can take a look and go find what is of interest to you. Until next time, take care and I'll see you in the next video.